Hey there, this is my Femme 37 AT review, and this thing is the Cargo Master. So starting off, we'll take a quick look through the truck setup and arrangement, starting with the engine. For the engine, well then, they're all strong, but I've gone with the SBR6 250R2, granting a power to weight ratio of S. Following this, you can select between the special fine tune or advanced special gearbox. Obviously, I've gone for the advanced special gearbox, and this rounds off the remaining stats as A plus for durability and C minus for fuel consumption. You cannot adjust the suspension. There is no issue with this though, as the ground clearance is more than adequate. The truck does have all wheel drive always on, although the diff lock is on a toggle, though you'll only really need the diff lock in the deepest mud, snow, or watery conditions, as you'll already be in low gear anyway. On the tyre front, there is only one size, which is 71 inches. For reference, that's bigger than me. These are essentially monster truck wheels. MSH are the tyres to select between, and there are jack-of-all-treads options as well. Their massive size plus the truck's power means that not much will stand in its way. The centre of gravity does seem to be fairly high, which is understandable given that it's a very tall truck. Just remember to turn in the direction you are rolling if this is going to happen. For frame add-ons, you have what seems like limited options. You can equip the typical fuel and van body options plus you know, the super large crane, but the truck does have its own special four slot cargo bed, which does reduce the power to weight ratio to A+. A three slot cargo bed is available if you want the use of a small loading crane though, but you will end up with the same power to weight. There is an option for a high saddle but no low saddle, but for me this is fine because one, the truck is very high and it wouldn't really make sense or probably fit. And two, you can tow a hitch trailer behind the truck with the four slot cargo bed. So you can run eight slots of cargo between that and a ramp flatbed trailer. And it'll be way more maneuverable than the super long janky eight slot cargo trailer. Unfortunately, I do feel like the opportunity for more logging options was lost here with this truck. There is an option for a roof rack and I would suggest using it as it does give you access to another 140 litres of fuel. As a side note, swapping the truck's colour will adjust the four slot bed colour so everything will match. Typical fuel consumption rates with the advanced special gearbox when shifting cargo was up to 30 litres per minute in the roughest conditions, though you're not always going to be enduring those conditions. I'll estimate that in mud or dirt conditions you'll probably get at least 20 minutes driving time for which this truck is great for regions such as Amor. Back on the PTS, I used just two of these to complete a heap of work in a single run, shifting 12 slots of cargo plus the van body trailer with just one winch connecting the two trucks. Then in Maine, I discovered that rods are not needed as this thing just holds its way up river at a steady rate at 20 liters per minute without breaking a sweat. This is the definition of unlimited power. The big elephant in the room is the articulated frame. People are either going to love it or hate it. If you're comfortable with driving the CAT 745C or the Azov Antarctic, then you'll be fine. Otherwise, it'll take some getting used to, especially as the articulated system will try to take the path of least resistance and either move fully to the left or fully to the right. If it's really that much of an issue, just download a mod that changes the steering. So to summarise, the pros of this truck include great ground clearance, up to 8 slots of cargo with the ramp flatbed trailer, there's no need to really ever use the high saddle trailer, it's got massive tyres, it's got a lot of power under the bonnet, all wheel drive is always on, and the advanced special gearbox is always a win. And the cons of this truck include no logging options by towing a medium sized trailer, the steering can be tricky, and the fuel consumption can sneak up on you a bit. And it is difficult to reverse trailers because you've got multiple articulation points. To acquire this truck, you'll need access to Season 12 Public Energy, and you can start the mission for it straight away. It is called Abandoned Giant, and it requires you to tow the FEM from Oviro Hills to the nuclear plant in the reactive zone, which is overall a fairly short journey for the towing. Just be sure to use a large truck as the FEM is very heavy. I use the dam. Deliver it, and boom, unlocked. Be sure to grab its diff lock upgrade in Flatland and then the biggest engine upgrade which is also in Viro Hill. So after that it's an 8 out of 10 for me. It's actually a bit refreshing that the FEM can go through fuel more quickly than most other trucks. As recently a lot of the trucks have been very economical for fuel so it's just not been an issue. Now you have to think about it a little bit.
I do also believe that the diff lock should be always on, given that the way the wheels always drive forwards and never turn, but that's just me. There may well be a real world reason that it's like this. And on that note, it's time to wrap up. So I want to thank you very much for watching. If you found this video useful, then please let me know down below and have a great day.